Mafia bosses often meet with tragic ends because of the kind of lives they live. But have you ever wondered what happens to their loved ones, the ones they leave behind? In today's video, I'll tell you exactly what happened to Sammy the Bull Gravano's wife. Deborah Scabetta, also known as Deborah Gravano, is the former wife of Sammy Gravano, a former mob hitman. They married in 1971 and divorced 25 years later. Her ex-husband is widely regarded as one of New York's most powerful hitmen and was a member of the Gambino crime family. Being the ex-wife of a former mobster hitman nearly guaranteed you a top rank in one of Brooklyn's most powerful mafias, but things do not go as planned for Deborah. She moved from housewife to drug trafficker to homely grandmother. Here's everything you need to know about Sammy Gravano's ex-wife. Early life. Deborah Scabetta was born in 1953 in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, to parents who were first-generation immigrants. She grew up in a working-class neighborhood as one of five children. Her background instilled in her the principles of hard work and commitment, which would eventually impact her relationships and decisions. Bensonhurst was a cultural melting pot with a strong Italian-American presence. Deborah's youth was typical of many in her neighborhood, with deep familial ties and a strong sense of belonging. However, it was also a period when crime and organized syndicates were common in the area. The public does not know her age, academic qualifications, or siblings. However, we do know that she had a brother named Nicholas Scabetta. Relationship with Sammy Deborah's relationship with the infamous Sammy the Bull Gravano started in the late 60s. Her life changed dramatically when she met Sammy. He was already part of the Gambino crime family and had a growing reputation within the mob. The couple began dating and eventually got married on December 1, 1971. Their marriage introduced Deborah to a world that would drastically change the path of her life. While at first she enjoyed this new lifestyle, it quickly became evident that marrying a mafioso presented its own set of issues. Deborah was only seven years into her marriage when she learned of the death of her only known brother, Nicholas. However, she had no idea that her husband was involved in Nick's death. Unaware of this fact, she continued to live with him and run her restaurant. So we all piled into the car, seven of us squeezed in together, chatting and giggling. As we were on our way, I suddenly looked at Diane and realized I didn't even know her that well. I pointed at a cute brunette girl and asked Diane who she was. Diane introduced her as her sister, Deb, and we began chatting. Deb mentioned she had just gone through a breakup in this room. The Divorce Deborah and Sammy had two children, Karen and Gerard. As a mother, Deborah fought tirelessly to provide a secure home environment for her children amidst the upheaval of their father's criminal activity. She frequently attempted to hide them from the darker sides of their father's life, hoping to present them with a feeling of normalcy. Deborah Scabetta's 25-year marriage to Sammy Gravano ended quite tragically when she discovered that he was gay and killed her brother Nick to avoid exposure. Sammy was involved in a homosexual relationship with Jack Russo, a member of the Gambino crime family. To prevent Nick from being exposed, Sammy killed his brother-in-law. In 1978, Nick's death was revealed to be due to drug and alcohol abuse. Sammy confessed to killing 19 people, including Nick, but did not reveal the reason for his actions. His confession came when he entered the United States Witness Protection Program to help bring the Gambino crime family to justice. Deborah Scabetta was deeply affected by the revelation and decided to leave her house in Tempe, Arizona, believing it was necessary for her children's sake. According to sources, following her separation from Sammy, Deborah became involved in the Gambino family's illicit activities. The specifics of her connection with the family remain unclear, but we do know that she had a role in the family's downfall, since her activities resulted in the arrest of 40 members of the crime family, including herself. After being caught in Arizona for her involvement in the family's ecstasy ring, Deborah Scabetta pled guilty to illegitimately managing an organized narcotics conspiracy in 2001 and was fortunately sentenced to a few years on probation. Sammy accused of being gay. Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano, the notorious gangster, had homosexual encounters with a young guy before rising through the ranks of the Gambino crime family, according to a new book proposal now being developed. 
Laura and Karen Garofalo were just 17 and 25 years old when Gravano's thugs murdered their father, Eddie Garofalo, in 1990. In the sisters' new book, Our Father's Blood, they say Gravano's bisexuality was common knowledge in Brooklyn. People in Bensonhurst knew, but no one really talked about it, Laura Garofalo told the media. Gravano had an undercover affair with a man known as Jack Russo by the Garofalos. After marrying Deborah Scabetta in 1971, Gravano allegedly discovered that Scabetta's brother Nick had disclosed to her that he was gay and had also been associated with Russo. Nick knew Gravano's secret, Garofalo reveals. Nick Scabetta, an alcoholic with a cocaine habit, was assassinated in 1978 after insulting a Gambino boss's daughter and getting into a fight with another son. According to Laura, Sammy had always maintained that Nick was killed because his behavior was out of control and that he was a liability. But the truth is that he wanted him dead because Nick had threatened to out him. According to Garofalo, Scabetta's murder is the only one of the 19 admitted to by Gravano as part of his plea deal. Daughters. Through the years, many of them have reached out to one another to band together to fight back against Sammy the Bull. Police were knocking on our door and you know, they told me my brother was murdered. Jackie Colucci, Joe's little sister. Louis Melito, Gravano's best friend and Gravano says partner in the crime business. His daughter Dina went to Gravano for help when her dad disappeared. How could you not describe this man? When Sammy snitched, the underboss, who she thought was her companion and spouse, turned out to be a notorious mafioso. Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano, born on March 12, 1945 in Brooklyn, New York, is a notorious criminal known for his association with the Gambino crime family and four of the five families involved in organized crime. He was initially involved in mobbing people, looting banks and robbing shops before becoming a regular offender and serving in the U.S. Army in 1964. He was discharged from his duties with honor in 1966 and was approached by Shorty Sparrow, an associate of the Colombo family, to become part of the Cosa Nostra, also known as the Mafia. Gravano started his career with larceny, hijacking, racketeering, and organized illegal poker games in clubs. He became a favorite of the Colombo family and committed his first murder in 1970. He later became part of the Gambino family to avoid conflict with Colombo mobster Ralph Sparrow and became close associate of Salvatore Tato Arello, who then became his mentor. He started a construction business to earn a good income, but later was charged for double murder by a former associate. His rampage impressed Arello, who offered him a membership in the Gambino family. In 1976, Gravano finally became a member of the family and described the day as the best of his life. In 1978, Gravano faced a situation where he was ordered to murder his own brother-in-law, Nicholas Gabetta, for the latter had insulted George Titico's daughter. Rather than murder, Gravano decided to punish Nicholas with a brutal beating. However, his boss, Paul Castellano, wanted him dead and ordered his men kill Gravano if he stood in their way. After a lot of convincing by his men, Gravano acquiesced to the murder of Nicholas. In 1980, Gravano was ordered to murder John Johnny Key Simone and shot him to death. Two years later, Gravano ordered his men to plot the murder of Frank Fiala, a cocaine dealer. He shot Frank in broad daylight, but there was no witness against him. Gravano was charged with tax evasion due to a triggered IRS investigation. After his release, he focused on his construction business until he entered into a dispute with his business partner and a member of the Gambino family, Louis DeBano. He accused DeBano of holding back $200,000 in payments and threatened to kill him. John Gotti, the Don, impressed Gravano with Neil Delacroach, the underboss of the Gambino family. In 1985, Gravano was asked by John Gotti's friend to plot the murder of Castellano and succeeded in killing him. In May 1986, Gotti was arrested under charges of RICO, and Gravano became the acting boss. After bribing a juror, Gravano got Gotti acquitted. However, Gotti was again arrested on December 11, 1990 under similar charges. During the trials, evidence in the form of tape emerged which showed Gravano as a mad killer, and Gotti claimed that he was a long-suffering boss. Gravano agreed to testify against Gotti and was convicted on September 26, 1991, but was released a year later. 
In 2000, he was arrested on drug charges, along with his wife and kids. He was released on September 18, 2017, but will forever remain on federal parole. Deborah Gravano's Daughter Karen Gravano, daughter of Sammy Gravano and Deborah Scabetta, was born into the Mafia's life in 1972. Sammy lived a dangerous life in Arizona. Karen, who wished to detach herself from her father's dishonor, terrible reputation, morbid work, and wild lifestyle, relocated to Staten Island by herself. There, she founded a popular spa and worked as a licensed skincare professional. She also launched a weight loss product, which sold out within two years of release. She soon became romantically involved with David Seabrook. It's unclear whether he belonged to a mafia family, but he is known to have worked with Sammy and carried out some dirty tasks for him. According to some stories, David was convicted of attempted murder at the age of 14. David and Karen had a passionate relationship and hurried into engagement after just a few months of dating. Karina, David's daughter with Karen, was born in 1999 and is currently 21 years old. Karen and her family eventually moved to Arizona. There, they assisted Sammy with his various tasks. In the early 2000s, the entire family, including Karen's real brother, Gerard, was arrested in connection with a narcotics network in which Sammy was implicated. They were all involved in drug distribution, and reports confirmed that the family sold thousands of ecstasy pills. Deborah and Karen, as well as many others involved, were given warnings, brief prison sentences, or three years of probation. But Gerard and David were sentenced to 10 years in prison. Shortly thereafter, David's sentence was increased by a few years on other criminal accusations. Karen and Karina returned to Staten Island, where Deborah joined them and eventually opened a cafe. David has always been referred to as Karen's husband, but they never actually married. They split up and called off their engagement when Karina turned 10 years old. However, they always communicate to discuss key decisions about Karina's life and future. David was freed from prison several years ago. Even though he was from Queens, he relocated to Arizona after recovering his freedom. Karina previously announced on TV that she was dating someone fresh. David's career began in the music industry. He previously worked with a music producer. He returned to this field and now operates a record company. He also operates an artist management organization that identifies and develops new talent. Around 2019, reports claimed that he had started a website called Employ that connects black, Hispanic, and minority talent to new job opportunities. On Twitter, he offers regular updates on his work. Where is Karen Gravano now? Karen and her daughter travel between Staten Island and Arizona, where Sammy and David currently reside. A few years ago, in 2013, she wrote a book called Mob Daughter, which was more a memoir outlining major incidents in her life. The book focuses on her upbringing and describes the lifestyle of a mafia family in New York. She rose to prominence as an American reality TV celebrity after appearing on the show Mob Wives in 2011. The super hit reality documentary series aired on VH1 and followed the lives of women married to mobsters who were apprehended and imprisoned. She appeared in several seasons and earned a large sum of money. She also built up a substantial fan base, which led to her becoming an Instagram sensation. But I almost was there a couple of times. Not like there, there. I was in, I got arrested and I did a little time, like maybe a little over 48 hours. Anyway, are we gonna talk about me? That's all we ever do is talk about. Okay, this is the princess. I am so proud of her. Like honestly, she's my pride and joy. Like Karina is very independent, but she's a little bit of like drama sometimes. You're like, oh yeah, I'm very extra. Extra, yeah. yeah. That's the word. That's the word. I'm That's okay. Of. Me and Karina have like this unique, like. She has had an on and off relationship with music producer Storm. She also had a seven year romance with gangster Lee Diavanzo, who later married someone else. Lee's wife, Drita, also appeared in Mob Wives, and the two ladies were constantly at odds with one another. She has a net worth of one and a half million dollars and is currently featured on MTV's new reality documentary series, Families of the Mafia. The show focuses on Staten Island's mafia families and how their parents' connections to the underworld affects the lives of their children. The show also stars Sammy, David, Karina, and her lover. What happened to her son? 
Gerard Gravano, a former member of the Gambino family, was involved in ecstasy trafficking in the late 1990s due to his friendship with the leader of a local gang named the Devil Dogs. Their relationship was strained due to the hitman's plot to kill his then-partner for boasting about dating the bull's son. Gravano was also held at gunpoint for disrespecting the family. In February 2000, Sammy, Gerard, and nearly 40 others were arrested on charges related to running a multi-million dollar drug ring from Arizona to New York. At the age of 24, Gravano pled guilty to federal conspiracy counts in New York and two counts of illegally conducting an enterprise and offering to sell and transport dangerous drugs in Arizona. He faced up to 15 and a half years and nine years for the different charges, respectively. Since his release from prison, Gerard Gravano has settled down in Arizona, where he seems content as a son, husband, father of four, and entrepreneur. His social media platform suggests that he's worked things out between them, and he's publicly appreciated his father and their bloody family. Gerard is happily married to Amy Lynn Price Gravano, a hairstylist and health coach with whom he owns and operates a local business called Impact Payment Options. They started dating in 2011 and tied the knot in February 2018. It appears that the former felon has stayed away from any legal trouble following his stint in prison. Where is Deborah Scabetta now? Deborah Scabetta pled guilty to illegally managing an enterprise in 2001 for her role in a multi-million dollar ecstasy ring that operated from Arizona to New York and was sentenced to three years probation. Since then, it appears that she's opted to remain out of the spotlight in order to focus only on her blood family and personal life. Deborah did open a restaurant before her arrest, which she briefly operated with her son Gerard, but it appears to have been closed or at least changed ownership. As a result, all we know about Sammy's ex-wife is that she currently resides in Phoenix, Arizona, where she appears to be completely satisfied to be surrounded by her loving children and grandchildren. Deborah received no jail time. It appears that the judge did not consider her offense to be significant enough to rule. Deborah Scabetta's life story is one of metamorphosis, from humble beginnings in Brooklyn to becoming involved in organized crime through her marriage to Sammy Gravano. Her experiences illustrate not only the difficulties encountered with those who live with notorious figures, but also themes of loyalty, betrayal, resilience, and finally, redemption. As she continues to live quietly away from the media spotlight, now as a grandmother, her experiences provide us significant insights into handling difficulties while keeping strong familial ties throughout generations.